Control Shift's calendars feature allows organizations to quickly and easily manage a day of action or other grouping of events. Each calendar receives its own lookup page that only includes the events that are part of the calendar. This makes it easy for supporters to quickly find the events that are happening near them or to be recruited to host an event if there isn't one happening nearby. Calendars also include special settings for events, things like default text for event pages, special organizer instructions, and custom emails sent to event attendees and hosts. The calendars feature can also be used alongside ControlShift's Partnerships feature. ControlShift's Partnerships feature allows ControlShift customers to partner with third-party organizations to run petitions and events together. When setting up a partnership, ControlShift customers can decide how much information to share with a partner. They can optionally choose to share every signature or RSVP that's added to a partner petition or event, or they can share only the users who have opted in to being shared with the partner when signing or RSVPing to a partner petition or event. We're going to talk about the ways that partners and calendars can be used together to support your event organizing. But first, let's talk about what individual partner event pages look like. This is a partner event page. It looks a lot like all other event pages on the platform, but it has a few minor updates. The first is in the hosted by section. As you can see, the partner's logo is included next to the event host's name. This allows site visitors to quickly see that this is a partner event. Additionally, the partner information is included at the bottom of the event page in the Partner Association section. Finally, if you look at the attendee form, you can see that this event has a custom opt-in and custom partner disclaimer text that allows attendees to either opt-in or opt-out from being added to this partner's mailing list. While this event is being hosted by a single partner, it is also possible to have an event that is co-sponsored by multiple partners. As you can see on this event page, there are two partners listed in the Partner Association section. These two partners make up the coalition that is supporting this coalition partner event. Let's quickly look at the URLs for these two type of events. If we look back at the single partner event, you'll see that there's a partner parameter included in the URL. If we look at the coalition event, there is not currently a partner parameter in the URL. Because there is not a URL parameter present, we will treat both partners as equal partners on this event page. Both partners will be listed in the partnership section. There will be no partner listed in the event host section, and opt-ins for both partners will appear on the attendee form. For a coalition event, it is also possible to include a partner parameter. When a partner parameter is present, we'll first check to make sure that it corresponds to an approved partner for this event. If it does, we'll update the coalition event page in a couple of ways. The first is that the partner who matches the parameter will now be listed in the event host section. They're given additional prominence because they're the partner who is recruiting this attendee. However, both partners are still listed in the association section. Finally, on the attendee form, because we have a partner parameter, the opt-in has been updated to only include the opt-in for the partner that is recruiting this particular attendee. The partner parameter is going to come up a lot in this video, so we wanted to be sure to give a brief overview of it first. With that out of the way, let's talk about the different types of calendars that you can organize with partners. When thinking about the ways that organizations can use partners and calendars together, we've thought about four main use cases. You can see them listed here. We're going to briefly introduce each case, and we'll also talk about the ways to set up that particular use case. The four main use cases are single partner calendars, primary partner calendars, independent partner calendars, and equal partner slash true coalition calendars. Each of these use cases is slightly different, and you can choose the one that makes the most sense for your organizing. Let's start with single partner calendars. Single partner calendars are the easiest type of calendar to explain. Single partner calendars mean that you're only working with one other partner to run these events. That single partner will be listed as a co-host of all of the events in the calendar. They will help you recruit and support hosts, as well as recruiting attendees. Whenever an event is created in this calendar, it will be associated with that single partner. As attendees are viewing events in the calendar, they will always see that single partner on the event page. They will also always either see the opt-in to join the partner's mailing list, or they will be automatically added to the partner's mailing list depending on the settings that you have set up for that individual partner. 
As mentioned, this is generally the easiest type of calendar to set up. In this example, we've created a Rally for Choice calendar. We're asking our supporters to join or host events across the country in support of reproductive choice. For this example, we've partnered with a fake organization called Physicians for Choice. They're a partner for all of the events in this calendar, and all events that are created should immediately be associated with their partnership. To set this up, we would create a normal calendar. We're not going to go through the calendar setup process here, but you can check out our video and help documentation if you have questions about how to set up a calendar. Once the calendar is created, we'll need to go to the admin details section of this calendar. You can do that by going to the calendar lookup page and clicking admin or by going to your admin homepage, calendars, and then choosing the particular calendar. On this details page, you'll see the partners section. If we had not yet added this partner to the calendar, we can do so by clicking add to partnership, adding the slug of this partner, which is the end of their URL, and then clicking to confirm. As you can see, this partner has now been added to this calendar. They are now listed in the left sidebar of this calendar above the description, and any newly created events will be automatically associated with them after the event is created. This is a traditional partner calendar. Any partner staff members who have been invited to have partner admin access to this partnership will also immediately have access to event host tools for any event in this calendar. The next type of calendar is a primary partner calendar. We have a couple of examples of how we expect this type of calendar to work. Imagine that your organization is running a series of events across the country to prevent book bans. Your primary partner may be a National Libraries Association, a national partner who is co-sponsoring all of the events happening everywhere in the country. Let's imagine that you're also partnering at the local level with local library associations. They're only helping you to co-sponsor the events in their specific communities. Those local organizations would be considered secondary partners. They would only be listed as partners on the specific events that are happening in their community, while the national partner, who is the primary partner, would be listed on all events. Another example of this is with unions. Imagine that your organization is working with a union who's going on strike. They are the primary partner for all events in the strike calendar. They are automatically added as the partner for every event, and every event attendee will automatically see information about that union when they go to RSVP to one of the events. Alongside these primary partner events, maybe you're partnering with affiliate unions who are hosting solidarity events. They're not the primary partner that is actually striking, but they're just showing their support for the striking union. They would be considered a secondary partner they would only be listed as a partner on the solidarity events that they are organizing. When someone goes to RSVP to one of the main strike events, they should see information about the striking union who is the primary partner. If someone goes to one of the solidarity event pages, they should see information about the striking union who is the primary partner, as well as the affiliate union who is the secondary partner. The setup for this calendar is very similar to the single partner calendar setup. We'll go through this in a second. However, when you're running one of these calendars, the URL parameters that we talked about earlier become much more important. The events that are recruited by the secondary partner, that would be the local library organization or the affiliate union, need to be recruited using a URL that includes their partner slug. With that out of the way, let's take a look at this in action. I've come back to the calendar we looked at previously, our Rally for Choice calendar. This calendar was set up using the normal calendar creation flow, and it has a single partner listed in the calendar's details page. The partner that is listed on this page is the primary partner. In our previous two examples, this would be the National Library Organization or the Striking Union. For this example, we're going to reuse the Physicians for Choice partnership that we used previously for the single partner calendar. If I return to this page, supporters are able to create new events that are automatically associated with Physicians for Choice. However, I can also use this calendar as it's currently configured with a single partner to support the primary partner calendar use case. In order to support events being recruited by secondary partners, I first need to create a partnership for that secondary partner. You can see this partnership here. This will be our secondary partner on this calendar. This partner will only be collaborating on events happening in Seattle. 
At the top of this page in the address bar, I'm going to copy the slug of this partner, in this case, Seattle-partner. Returning to the Calendar Hub page, I can add a partner parameter to the URL. While viewing this page with a partner parameter in the URL won't immediately make any changes to the supporter experience, it's going to allow the event that I create to also be tied to the secondary partner. I'm going to go through the process of creating an event. As I move to the event creation page, you can see in the address bar that the partner parameter has remained in the URL. Again, this is how Control Shift will know that this event should also be tied to the Seattle secondary partner. When I click to publish this event, it will be created. If I scroll down the event page, you'll see that it's automatically associated with both partners, the primary partner, Physicians for Choice, and the secondary partner, Seattle Partner. The secondary partner is only a listed partner because I created this event using a URL that had the partner parameter included within it. If that partner parameter had not been included in the URL, this event would have been only associated with the primary partner, Physicians for Choice. This will update the event page in a few ways. When I view the event page as an attendee, you can see that there is now a coalition-wide opt-in ask included on this page. It includes the opt-in text from both the primary and the secondary partners. Because there are now two partners associated with this event, I can use the partner parameter for either partner when viewing the event page. If you look at the URL above, you can see that the partner parameter for Physicians for Choice is now included in this event's URL. That means that the attendee forum will be updated to only include the text about Physician for Choice's opt-in. It also means that Physicians for Choice is now listed in the place of prominence next to the event host section. Both partners are still listed in the partner association section. The same is also true if the partner parameter for Seattle Partner is used for this event URL. In that case, Seattle Partner will be the one that is in the place of prominence next to the event host section, and Seattle Partner's opt-in information will show on the attendee form. As discussed, when running a primary partner calendar, the URL partner parameters are important. As you're planning your communications with your partners, you may want to make sure that links to the calendar page include the partner parameter for both the primary and the secondary partners. The partner parameter will persist through to the event page, not only if someone is creating a new event, but also if someone is choosing to RSVP to an existing event. Regardless of whether the parameter refers to the primary or the secondary partner, it can be useful when someone is RSVPing to limit the number of checkboxes that they see on the attendee form. When the secondary partner's partner parameter is included in the calendar hub page's URL, it will be used during event creation to associate the newly created event with that secondary partner. For any events that are already co-sponsored by that secondary partner, it will also update the RSVP form to show the secondary partner's opt-in language. However, the secondary partner's partner parameter will have no effect on events that are only being sponsored by the primary partner. If the secondary partner is not already an approved partner for this event, their opt-in information will not be shown on the attendee form and they will not be listed in the hosted by section. The only information that will show up on the attendee form will be the opt-in for the primary partner, even though I have the secondary partner's parameter in my URL. The secondary partner is only able to recruit attendees from the events that they have specifically recruited. All other events will only be shared with the primary partner. While it may seem like the partner parameter is more important to the secondary partners, since it's the only way that they will be listed on the events that they recruit, it will also be important for the primary partner to ensure that they're able to receive attendee information from events that are being co-sponsored by a secondary partner. One other thing to know about primary partner calendars. For single partner calendars, if you've created a custom theme for your partner, that theme will be automatically applied to the single partner calendar and all events within that single partner calendar. However, for primary partner calendars, the theme for your primary partner will only flow down to the events that they are the sole co-host of. The primary partner's theme will not be automatically applied to the events that are being co-sponsored by the secondary partner. If you would like to have a consistent theme between your primary partner, the calendar, 
and all events within the calendar, you'll need to apply the theme at the calendar settings level. You can do that by going to the calendar's admin page, clicking settings, and then going into settings. From here, you can choose the theme that you want to use. The next type of calendar is what we're calling independent partner calendars. An example here would be an Earth Day calendar. All of the events are happening on Earth Day, but they're being recruited by very different partners and each type of event will look very different. Maybe one partner is a student organization. All of their events are happening at high schools and they are only open to students at that school. Another partner is a local community organization. All of their events are happening within their specific local community and they're hosting beach cleanups in their area. A third partner is a bicyclists organization. They're hosting bicycle rides in cities around the country. For each of these events, the events that are being created are very different. It doesn't make sense to have the student organizations opt-in show up on a bicycle ride event. It also doesn't make sense to have the local beach cleanup organizations opt-in show up on all student association events. Because these events are so different and because the partners are so different, we consider them independent partners. Each partner is recruiting its own events and its own attendees, but they're all showing on the same calendar page so that a supporter of your organization can find an Earth Day event to attend. On the calendar lookup page, there may be event type filters and label filters to help me find the specific type of event I'm interested in joining whether that is a local beach cleanup, a bicycle ride, or a student event. Having a single lookup page makes it easy to find many different attendees from different types of communities who are all interested in taking part in events. But having the partners be considered independent partners makes more sense for that use case. The setup of this type of calendar is pretty simple. You can create this type of calendar by going through the calendar creation wizard. This type of calendar does not require any particular partner to be listed in calendar settings. None of these partners are being automatically added to all events in the calendar. Each partner will be given their own version of the calendar URL that includes their partner parameter. That parameter will be used when their supporters are creating events in the calendar. When that parameter is present, the partner will become the sponsor of the event that they have recruited. They will be the only partner that's listed on that event. Their opt-in information will be the only partner opt-in information shown on the attendee form, and they will be the only partner who has access to the event host tools. Let's take a look at how to set this up. You can see here that we have our Earth Day calendar. It includes various events that are all happening on a specific day. For this type of calendar, it often makes sense to include advanced filters like event types and labels. This will allow me to exclude student events if I'm not a student, or specifically look for bicycle events if I'm a bicyclist. It can make it easier for your supporters to find the specific events that they're interested in without having to wade through various events that they're not interested in. There are two events that have been created here. There's a beach cleanup and a walkout. If I look at the walkout, I can see that the student organization is the listed partner, and the RSVP forum includes the student organization's custom disclaimer. The other event is a beach cleanup, it's being sponsored by the local community organization. The local community organization's logo is shown on the event page, and the local community organization's opt-in is shown on the attendee form. You can also see on this page that the partner's custom branding is flowing down to this individual event. This calendar is created using the normal calendar creation flow. Unlike the previous two calendars that we took a look at, there are no partners listed in this calendar's details page. Instead, all events should be created with a partner URL parameter. As mentioned, URL parameters will be extremely important when running an independent partner calendar. If you look to the address bar of this page, you'll see that the Seattle partner, the local community partner parameter is included in our URL. As I search for my local event, that partner parameter will persist in the URL. When I go to create my new event, the partner parameter will remain in the URL. When I click to publish this event, it's immediately associated with the local community partner. Again, their opt-in information will be shown on this event's attendee form, their logo appears on the event page, and their branding is being used for this new event. If I were working with a student association instead, I would copy the slug for this organization, 
return to the calendar page and set the partner parameter to the student association slug. When people search for an event near them, that slug will remain in the URL. If they go to create an event, again, that URL parameter will persist. Any newly created event will be automatically associated with the Student Climate Association when it's created via this URL. For independent partners, the URL parameter will mostly affect event creation. It will have little to no effect on RSVPs. The reason for that is because each event will only have one partner by default. Either the URL parameter will match the partner or not, but it will not actually change the attendee form. The sole partner for this event will still always be listed on the event attendee form. When working with multiple independent partners on an independent partner calendar, be sure to give them the calendar hub page URL with their partner parameter present. They can use that special URL when sending emails to their supporters, recruiting event hosts, or when posting on social media channels. If their partner parameter is not included in the URL when an event is created, they will not be listed as a partner on that event. If there is no partner parameter listed at all when an event is created, it will not be tied to any partners. It will only be associated with your control shift organization. You will be able to manually associate an event with a partnership, but it will be easier from an admin perspective to just give them the URL to start with. As mentioned previously, because each of these events is tied to a single independent partner, if you have specified a special theme for the partner, that theme will flow down to the events that the partner has recruited. Again, you can see that on this beach cleanup page where the event becomes very red, which matches the Seattle partner's theme. If you would like to have cohesive branding across the calendar and all events contained within it, you can do that by setting a special theme at the calendar level. To do so, go to the calendar's admin page, click settings, settings, and choose the appropriate theme. The theme that you choose will then be automatically used for both the calendar lookup page and all events included within the calendar. When a theme is set at the calendar level, we'll ignore any special themes that have been set up at the partnership level. This can allow you to have the cohesive branding across all events that you may wish to have for a calendar. The last type of calendar is what we call equal partners or true coalition calendars. These are events where you're partnering with multiple organizations, but every organization has an equal share in recruiting and promoting the events in the calendar. An example of this would be a climate march where you have multiple national or international environmental organizations who are all helping to plan and recruit attendees for marches happening around the world. This type of calendar could also be used for really any issue where you have multiple organizations who are all equally contributing to making the events successful. When setting up one of these calendars, all partners will be added to the calendar settings page. All partners of the calendar will be listed on all event pages. Any attendee who is going to an event page may see the opt-ins for all partners on that page. Unlike the independent partners calendar, for true coalition calendars, the partner slug will not be important for creation, but it may be important for RSVPs. Let's take a look at a true coalition calendar. This calendar is an example of a true coalition calendar. If you look at the left-hand sidebar, you can see that we have three partners listed. These are the three equal partners. When a supporter goes to create an event within this calendar, it will automatically be associated with all of the partners who are listed at the calendar level. Neither of the listed partners needs to have their partner parameter included in the event creation URL. And if a partner parameter from one of these three partners is present in that URL, it will more or less be ignored. All of these partners will be automatically listed on the event page, regardless of the initial recruiter of this event. This calendar is created using the regular calendar flow. However, once the calendar has been created, you'll want to list every partner in the partner section of the calendar details page. You can add additional partners to a calendar by clicking add to partnership and completing the URL of the partner. Once a partner is listed in this section, all events that are created within this type of calendar will be automatically associated with that partner. Now, let's look at the RSVP experience. If you look at the address bar, you'll see that no partner parameters are currently present in this URL. If I go to the event page without any partner parameters included in the URL, 
I will automatically see all partners listed at the bottom of the page and no partners listed next to the event host section. Additionally, you'll see that the attendee form includes disclaimers and opt-ins for each of the three partners on this event. This is the flow if a partner parameter is not present. To add a partner parameter to the URL, go to the Partnerships Hub page and copy the end of their partnership URL. This is the partnership slug. Once you've copied the slug, return to the Calendar Hub page. From here, add question mark partner and the slug of the partner to the URL. This page has now been reloaded with a partner parameter present. Now, when I go to the event RSVP page, I'll still see all three partners listed in the partners section of this event. However, the partner whose parameter is included in the URL will be given the place of prominence next to the event host section. Also, instead of seeing all opt-ins and all disclaimers from all partners, I will only see the opt-in for the specific partner whose parameter is included in the URL. If I come to this page using a different partner's parameter, that new partner will be shown the place of prominence next to the event host section, and that new partner will be shown in the attendee form. To reiterate, when it comes to true coalition calendars, the partner parameter is not used for event creation. Regardless of what parameter is included in the URL, all events created in this calendar will be associated with each of the partners that have been added to the calendar's settings. However, the partner parameter is used for RSVPs. This allows each partner to access the attendees that they have recruited. It's also possible to run a true coalition calendar without using partner parameters at all. If you choose not to use any partner parameters, attendees will see opt-in information from all partners when they go to RSVP to an event. A couple of final things to know about true coalition calendars. The first is that if you have custom branding for an individual partner who's included as part of the coalition, that branding will not flow down to either the calendar hub page or to any individual event pages. If you'd like to use special branding for this calendar and have it be used on all calendar event pages, you'll need to specify the special theme at the calendar level. To assign a theme to a calendar, go to the calendar's admin page, click settings, go to settings, and then choose the theme. This theme will be used for both the calendar lookup page and for individual events within the calendar. The second thing to keep in mind is that because each of these three partners has equal access to all events within the calendar, it means that all partner admins from each of these partners will be able to use the event host tools. The event host tools will allow them to send updates to attendees of this particular event, as well as see the attendee list for this event. To recap, these are the four main use cases for calendars. Single partner calendars, where you're working with only one organization. Primary partner calendars, where one partner is listed as a co-sponsor of all events, while secondary partners are only co-sponsors of the events that they've recruited. Independent partner calendars, where each partner recruits its own events. And equal partner slash true coalition calendars, where all partners have equal ownership over the events in their calendar. While these four main use cases cover the majority of ways that you may wish to organize, keep in mind that some of them also overlap. For example, you could imagine a calendar that has three partners who are all collaborating on all events at a national level. And then you also want to have a fourth partner who is only collaborating on local events in their community. That type of use case would be a mix of equal partners and primary partner and it would also be possible within the calendar settings. If you have any questions about special use cases, or if you have any questions about partners, calendars, and the ways that you can use them more generally, you can always feel free to reach out to the Control Shift support team. We're always happy to answer questions via email or to hop on a call to talk through your specific use case. Thank you.